Coming up, I'm going to show you how I made this card in Blender with a bit of overpainting in Photoshop. A cat in a hat with a cake and a candle and a kitten. I did plan on actually making all of it in Blender, but in the end, it turns out it was quicker just to paint over in Photoshop with the older Wacom tablet. So yeah, I mean, if you've got more time to tweak stuff like the shaders and everything, then yeah, go for it, do it in Blender. But um, sometimes it's quicker to block out the scene in 3D and then paint over it in Photoshop because then you can, you can work a lot quicker in 2D with a basic sort of shape of what you want the scene to be depth wise. And, uh, and if you're like me, where you struggle with doing perspective stuff freehand or with perspective lines and stuff, then it is a lot quicker to then build it out in Blender. First port of call is to assemble a bunch of cat related birthday images and then use those as uh, some inspirational reference, then start building the scene. So that's what I did. And as always, we begin with the default cube. For no good reason, I usually impose some kind of ridiculous limit on myself to then say, I can only build things using the default cube or only from duplicating existing objects and try and not use primitives. I think what I'm trying to do is push myself to then get better at modeling and avoid using primitives to build things. So if I can make a sphere out of a cube, I've learned something, I guess, rather than just chucking in a sphere or a uh, cylinder or something. So I'm tending to do that quite a lot. So these four cubes are going to be a chair, a cat, and a table and a cake. And I'm going to model the various things out of these cubes. The first one being the cake. So what I do here is just subdivide and kind of cheat a bit because I'm using one of these, uh, a modifier that basically adds more geometry to make it rounder. But again, I'm going to overpaint it. So I'm not really too worried about cheating in this instance. Uh, the next bit is the chair. So this is just uh, slicing and dicing the original cube. And then what I'm going to do is pull out the shapes, the individual faces to make the back here and extrude that up. And lastly, to make the cat shape. So I'm again subdividing and pushing it into uh, the approximation of a, a round shape, I guess. It doesn't need to be accurate because it's just again for blocking out the space to get an idea of how much space the cat takes up. Um, so it's not it's not by any means meant to be accurate. And then finished product is is going to be like a giant fur ball anyway. So I'm not going for realism here. So back to the self-imposed uh, challenge of doing things from existing polygons. I'm duplicating out parts of the cake to then make the plate. And then I think I'm going to duplicate it again to then make the candle to go on top. So basically we have a uh, quadrilateral here, just a um, basically a square shape. But because we've got eight vertices here, we can stretch out the, uh, the intermediate ones and then make it into effectively an eight-sided cylinder or an octagonal prism. And then making the flame is simply uh, extruding that out again, that same shape, and then scaling the top and the bottom to then approximate that sort of teardrop flame shape. The chair was a bit lacking in detail, so I went back and added some, uh, some struts along the back and a little bit of um, detail on the top. So the technique here is just duplicate a single face, extrude it in the same normal as the face exists on, and then uh, duplicate again so I can basically make cubes out of a single face and I know because I've duplicated the side face of the back of the chair going upwards it's going to be the same angle and everything else so it's, that's a it's a good technique for quickly blocking things out again the wall is basically a cube with a stripe on it so uh, I'll skip over that at this point I broke and I had to create a cone from a primitive I'm very sorry and then again, another primitive to make the cat's head, which is a giant icosphere. I was originally going to make a spiral, but that was a lot of effort. So instead, I just did a stripy hat instead and left it at that. So again, it's not I'm not going for accuracy more. I'm just going for like a basic shape to then paint over so I know where things are. So 
these aren't the most um, realistic looking cats at all. So for the first half hour, I forgot to actually hit the record button. So this is just showing you um, the stages I went through to then build this up. So at first I was adding like a layer of texture, very subtle. Um, and then what's that? More texture. Then painting over the fur for the cats, adding some shadow and highlights, more detail, drawing the eyes in, the cake, um, the candle, the reflections on the table, some more sort of stuff like whiskers and whatnot, some subtle blending, vignetting, and then just some additional gunge on top. That was the basic process. Um, but I forgot to record the part where I was creating the cat, so I'll just show you that quickly. So this is how I did the eyes. I have a basic, you know, flat circle shape like so. And then this is like the typical sort of fantasy gemstone shading. So you start round the bottom right, shading in progressively lighter colors like so. Just do very light, try and uh, blend this nicely. Maybe not quite too white. And then on the opposite side, in the recess, I'm getting progressively darker, like so. And then finally, you just add a highlight, so a specular highlight, as many as you want. And that's pretty much how you do like the, the gemstone effect. And then for these cats, obviously they have pupils. So I'll put a big old black pupil in the middle. Again, not going for realism. And then maybe a, the highlights over the pupil so it looks a bit more shiny. And that's pretty much how the eyes were done. For the fur, I used this brush. And basically what it does is it follows the stroke of the um, pen or mouse. So then if I just do, let's just do black. Just go around in a circle and then you've got the, the fur like so. That's pretty much how it was done. So you can see it, there wasn't a lot of effort in creating the fur. I mean, there's there's a lot to be said for making custom brushes in Photoshop if they're they're done done right. You can save a lot of effort in terms of you know these uh, high density kind of hatching effects. I mean, I made a bunch of brushes years ago for doing exactly that. So you can instead of spending i mean if you're doing this practically you could spend hours stippling or cross hatching stuff but with the um you know with these custom brushes in photoshop you can achieve the same effect very very quickly so this part starts after i've done the cats or most of the cat stuff and then just doing the cake and the can and stuff so i'm playing really fast and loose with the brushes mostly building sort of light and texture more than shape because what you can do again with Photoshop layers and everything, once you've built out the basic sort of texture of stuff, you can go back in and then edit the edges of things using things like um, uh, an opacity mask to then paint on, like I'm doing here. So I'm painting like contact shadows for the cakes and some reflections for the room and the cats and stuff. And then I'm going in and then basically masking out the parts of the cake I want to remove and the parts I want to keep. With a uh, with a layer mask, so it's pretty much it. There's not a lot to it really. Again, if you have a decent enough base in 3D to then paint over, the Photoshop bit is quite um, quite easy. You can always kind of like do it on autopilot. The only really challenging part here, I guess, was trying to um, just get the lighting right for things like the candle and stuff and um, the reflections. So there you go, that's, um, that's pretty much it. That's my first foray into um, overpainting from Blender into... Um... If you've made it this far, well done to you. Thank you for watching this far. Um, and if you have any suggestions for you know something you'd like me to cover in another video, do um, drop a comment below and I'll try and uh, get to it because generally I'll just make whatever comes into my head at the time so there won't be any particular... Um, agenda or plan for most of these videos uh so yeah just uh yeah drop a comment and and uh subscribe eventually i'll try and get more regular with uploading stuff 
yeah so thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time